Okay, we're in part three, and uh, this is a brilliant book, really enjoying it. And uh, it says, more recently, we have seen a real life conflict between evolution and creationism. Conservative Christians and Muslims have launched an all out assault on Darwinianism. As this phenomenon shows, it is certainly true that particular re religious doctrine can be in conflict with scientific theories. However, it does not follow that such hostility is inevitable. During the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church actively supported a great deal of science, but it also decided that philosophical speculation should not impinge on theology. Ironically, by keeping philosophers focused on nature instead of metaphysics, the limitations set by the Church may even have benefited science in the long term. Furthermore, the contrary to popular belief, the Church never supported the idea that the earth is flat. I've heard so many atheists tell me that the Bible teaches the earth is flat. Um, the Church never banned human dissection, never banned zero, and certainly never burned anyone at the stake for scientific ideas. The most famous clash between science and religion was the trial of Galileo in 1564 to 1642. Uh, the trial being in 1633. Academic historians are now convinced that this had as much to do with politics and the port self-esteem as it did with science. The trial is fully explained in the last chapter of this book in which we all see how much Galileo himself owed to his medieval predecessors. So you've got to be careful when you're reading these books that demonize things in history. You've got to ask the question why they're doing that and is it factual?